recording of event will be we try to share with everyone okay and uh, so let me introduce myself so, uh, so my name is santosh kumar sharma i am director impact here so impact uh, refers to monitoring evaluation and learning component for the organization magic bus india foundation so with me many colleagues of mine joining but like uh, I'll, i'll just name two three people who might be like in between supporting in the discussion so our chief it officer mr uh, naresh lamba has joined because he take care the uh, technical part it part in the organization and from his team mr rohit kale has joined and uh, from my team there are many people but like uh, chavi is the data analyst and the data system person and as well as uh, shiny is on the uh thematic side in the team monitoring and evaluation team and there are other people also okay so uh basically this will be around a one hour discussion so uh, i'm everybody can hear me yes very clearly okay 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 so uh, if possible for those who can on their camera things lively actually so if you can open your cameras will be fine if you have any challenge and no problem because uh, seeing faces is always a pleasure who is present there okay so uh, so i'll directly start with uh, my presentation basically uh, so basically uh, see in mnd is a kind of uh, in last three decades monitoring and evaluation has come at the center stage in the development sector and a lot of work has been done uh, on the like uh, on the technical side in terms of uh, 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 finding the better indicator finding the uh, better way of managing the uh, 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 mnd task uh, giving program feedback however in the last one decade there is a greater re- re- realization that technology really can help in this work because a lot of uh, learning from corporate sector also have come in the sector like using technology make the things faster make the things accurate and uh, help the people actually and give the better transparency in the same realization many organization has taken a step i'm not saying the magic bus alone uh, in uh, uh, no, adopting technology for monitoring evaluation and other work of the organization so where very heavily uh, uh, magic bus india foundation has adopted this uh, uh, technology part it part and uh, in this presentation basically will be sharing our experiences what we are doing and how the technology has been adopted in our system and how this is helping so it's a it's not a like uh, very academic kind of presentation it's a more of a uh, practitioner's uh, experience which we will be sharing okay so uh, to start with a quote basically technology will never replace the great leaders but technology in the hands of great leaders is transformational so just a tool technology cannot replace the your core intention your core work and the core leaders so it's important basically it's just a tool this so first i'll be introducing what magic bus india is basically so this organization was uh, founded in uh, 1999 it's a very interesting story so like uh, mr matthew spice was in mumbai and then uh, uh, he was working corporate sector and then he started working with the children and then organically the organization has grown up to this level actually and uh, basically what kind of work we are doing we are basically working with the adolescent the broader approach or umbrella approach we call it childhood to livelihood basically so uh, we start working with the children from class 6 and above and uh, there is a broadly two component one is the like for the adolescents uh, and then other b- uh, big component with the youth so uh, the things which we deliver is the life skill education education environment employability skills education livelihood connect and the community connect so these kind of major intervention we are doing we have a vision basically because see uh, poverty is a problem like but because the children and adolescents are not uh, sufficiently empowered and they kind of slip into this poverty cycle 
so it's important that uh, these young children break out this poverty cycle and uh, ha- lead a f- uh, fulfilling life and contribute to the, their community and to the country and our mission is how this can be achieved actually so uh, we are kind of preparing children so they can smoothly uh, uh, transition into the adulthood so that kind of empowerment and the skills we are inculcating in the children now comes to the organization reach basically so like uh, magic bus india foundation is one of the biggest uh, non governmental organization in india and maybe if you t- uh, consider the direct implementation it is the biggest actually so we are working uh, in 24 states and uh, in our li- uh, adolescent component more than f- uh, close to 4 lakh children are directly being covered and now we have another stream of the program with government stream where another millions of children are being covered we are working with uh, close to 3000 school running 302 uh, learning center we are we are working in the 72 district 24 states and um, half of the participants are uh, uh, girls basically and it's similar way like uh, our livelihood program is reaching to 825 uh, colleges we are managing 95 uh, uh, livelihood center 31 districts and 13 uts and girl parts another thing the which shows the uh, kind of size of the organization close to 3000 people work for the organization so it's a, in a sense even in terms of manpower also it may be one of the biggest uh, ngo in the india what we are trying to solve basically so what the premise and what kind of problem it is so if you see the some data actually data point 3 out of 10 adolescent have higher have only 3 out of 10 have higher secondary qualification lot of uh, a very high dropout rate is there and second is the like our youth basically youth even they take the education they are not uh, confident enough they don't they are not empowered enough to seek a job so that kind of soft skills are missing and as a result of that because the uh, high dropout and children are not that empowered to negotiate with children there is a very high rate of uh, uh, child marriage in, ma- in many of the pockets in india so what pro- basically what kind of problems we are trying to solve basically first like we are empowering the children we are like uh, uh, providing them fln support foundation and for their academic success we are inculcating employability skills in them then we are helping them them for the job placement and as well as like we are in touch with them even they get the job and helping them for the workplace success so this kind of organization this kind of size actually there is a logical uh, uh, region that we have to move to the technology basically so if you see the big picture a larger picture basically all technology are born out of the purpose so technology basically a very strong tool if you see now in the new era people are talking about ai and ar and that kind of thing so necessity of plugging technology into existing framework have been fed by the magic us and we very well we realize especially our leadership and our ceo are very keen to introduce the you know, this technology in the organization and uh, basically uh, why why we adopted the technology because we wanted to strengthen our feedback mechanism we wanted to have a robust data collection and we want to use the gis technology and we want to monitor all the activities and we want to have the data up to all levels and in addition to that we were looking for that we have the quality uh, we can track the quality uh, of the program and all the elements and we can develop the very good and strong evidence so that was a kind of premise of using technology in the magic bus india foundation in that uh, backdrop first like if you see the larger organization what kind of mnd system is there so i'm not going in i'll not be going in all the details of the mnd system the purpose of this slide just to share the link of technology and uh, mnd if you see the bottom of the slide there is input output outcome and impact so largely our all input and output level uh, tracking has been uh, based in the uh, our technology platform so we have multiple technology fl- platform in the center of this presentation you can see our core outcome area so we have uh, 
there are our outcomes can be divided in three areas school outcomes life outcomes work outcomes so uh, school outcomes related to academic success basically uh, uh, great progression school completion and then comes to the life outcome so life outcome refers to the life skill education basically developing resilience confidence problem solving gender equality developing that kind of skills and sensitivity among the children then comes to the employability uh, it uh, again refer to that having core skills which help them to get the job and the job placement and workplace so all of this has been you can see on the left uh, side bar all of this has been linked to the uh, our technology plate so first and foremost i think biggest system uh, on the li- uh, left most you can see there are three bucket of the program life skill and fln fln is the foundational learning and numeracy second bucket is the rrp urp rrp urp we refer to uh, uh, basically these specific program were run during the covid uh, support okay rural recovery program and urban recovery program so they were time being program and other lot of uh, surveys and the livelihood so what especially for our core uh, adolescent program our biggest system is the oasis so this system oasis is has is a in house developed system we our team has developed our it team we have very strong it team within the organization so they themselves have developed this system and entire a child a school identified a pro start with the program launch basically any program comes in the our it platform our oasis platform this program is launched in the it platform or basic masters are developed then a comprehensive child registration process is done child and parent so all the basic details are entered another uniqueness of magic bus india foundation is that uh, we are maybe the one of the few organizations which track every target uh, child otherwise like many of the organization maybe may not be tracking at the individual level but we as a organization has decided to track each individual and that kind of accountability and transparency mechanism we want to create and then child is register and then after registration entire session delivery attendance whatever events happen all of the evil things which happens uh, in terms of program delivery are captured to, through this system and this system itself generates some report but what we have done basically we have layered a power bi dashboard on it so a lot of uh, uh, visualization different dashboard different kind of analysis has uh, are being generated using this power bi dashboard in addition to that these core system we have a uh, program development team that uh, work on the our curriculum and our uh, training so they have developed mb academy so it's a basically a learning management system so entire learning curriculum uh, all kind of trainings and uh, another thing session quality monitoring we have a system of session quality monitoring all of this is uh, kind of uh, is housed in this mb academy and this system is having a, all the employees are having access to mb academy and oasis okay another things which uh, very recently maybe um like in the last year uh, we also have adopted omr based system so lot of surveys where our lot of energy goes in conducting one to one surveys uh, especially among the student lot of tests are conducted lot of uh, checks are conducted so now this has migrated to omr based system so omr sheets are given the children child fills and then uh, we have our software and the it system which is scan and generate the data it save lot of uh, first it saves lot of time other sec point number 2 it also help us to get the accurate information because there is no loss of understanding while uh, a investigator is capturing information secondly survey cto is a kind of um, uh, of the self kind of product and uh, we are also license holder of this so lot of surveys and all kind of things are captured through this survey cto another platform we are using the sixer class Sixer class again, like uh, we have taken and we have kind of converted to our purpose. So entire livelihood program is captured through this. So is another thing like uh, our all kind of surveys, uh, baseline, endline, midline. We ha- we are using this CAPI, uh, means like uh, our uh, 
mobile device based data collection is done so we get accurate information and timely information are get so you can see that the entire input and output and a larger part of our outcomes are now being captured through this uh, uh, it based platforms and systems now this journey how this journey started that's a very interesting part actually so around uh, in 2014 15 or 16 this idea like kind of started and uh, then it culminated and there were a lot of discussion in the organization so first we what we did basically we map all the requirement our it team our mnd team program team and then we started developing the system so what decision we took that time basically is start with the core system in like some of the organization thing they should be like developing in one piece the entire system rather than we what we did basically core operations of the program basically our child registration attendance program that kind of things we should be uh, developing first so that system developed and then it was rolled out and another a uh, care was taken in this rolling out basically strong capacity building of users were done and it was a continuous process it was not the thing like uh, <clears throat> just one time <coughs> but uh, it was a continuous process and it was continuously done another layer because in any it systems uh, roll out and those who have experience of rolling out it system you might have the challenges and it's a uh, rent like the user might be looking for different thing there may be some bug in the uh, thing so a very strong user support mechanism was created in the organization so like uh, in every region in every project office we develop the uh, champions and these champions will be coordinating with the staff and then finding the problem and kind of bridging uh, between it team and the users so that mechanism work very strongly and IT team developed a kind of uh, redressal mechanism which uh, quickly can solve all the problem. Then comes to the next level. So once things started settling, and then what we did actually, we keep improving the system based on the feed and keep adding the new elements and solution. So like uh, uh, some of the elements which were not earlier now kind of has been included in the our core IC system. for some of the things we realize we need all together a new uh, solution so uh, we did uh, our own uh, assessment and new solutions were added in the system so overall a big uh, kind of a combination of different solution become the kind of it system and also like uh, we have mapped the requirement ki one system will fulfill x requirement and other system will require uh, fulfill the y requirement in that way it was uh, uh, mapped now comes to the how this look like basically so i'm just showing our core oasis system on the uh, first two bars and uh, this screenshot if you see so this is a mobile device uh, screenshot basically so every employee is all the field worker our uh, our uh, the people who are working in the field going in schools going in the field they have been given access and at the real time they capture the data so what they do basically once a program launch from the centralized team they do the comprehensive uh, child registration through using their mobile device and it become a kind of master in the system and then later the attendance is continuously tracked uh, tracked by our field people and our uh, this mobile system has the utility of capturing photograph uh gis tracking all of this then comes to <coughs> sorry and then comes to our web based solution web based system so web based access has been given to all level of managers and uh, supervisors so they are accessing they are getting data they are, they can monitor from their level they can get all the uh, required report at their level so this manage is very well now comes to the uh, this uh, layering our uh, uh, this power bi system another because power bi is a basically a visualization software it has more uh, more beautiful uh, visualization and the uh, data presentation utility so what we have uh, uh, done actually we have layered this power bi over the our oasis system so oasis system basically uh, the, uh, this uh, power bi system providing lot of uh, uh, 
analysis and especially for all level of senior managers and uh, top management they are providing very crisp clear and accurate information and it is basically helping in the decision making at all the levels we have other platform as i talk to you so like we have the survey cto systems all kind of surveys are conducted uh, through this system and uh, this is being uh, kind of being used and especially in our learning management so like all kind of capacity building all kind of mandatory training all kind of uh, uh, our uh, uh, field level training are captured in this uh, uh, mb academy platform as well as like we have a provision of session quality monitoring so one person supervisor or a uh, our uh, uh, training team person he or she will go observe the session and uh, monitor the quality of session and those feedback goes back to the uh, pers- the person who deliver who is delivering the session and so it's uh, it's helping us in the continuous improvement other things like we are having this uh, our so, so this is all about the our learning management system so it mb academy hai spmf hai this is this is a thing. next is our uh, sixer class so this is being used by our uh, livelihood team so all youths who so they are enrolled basically in this system and whenever any training is started and then their training is tracked and the training data is fulfilled here post that their placement data is uh, entered here and we also have mechanism uh, to track the alumni so this entire data of our youth program uh, which we call livelihood program is captured through a system called the sixer class okay see <clears throat> what one more things what we have done now basically one more advanced step and very recently last one one year what we have done basically we have created a donor portal basically in a development sector it's a usual practice a, on a uh, periodic basis we submit the reports in terms of program report in terms of uh, our financial report submitted to the donor partner we call them the funding partners so this uh, for the funding partners what we have done we have created a portal basically now they can get the real time information and uh, so all kind of financial uh, reports all kind of program related reports are housed here and a donor can uh, uh, log in here log in credential have been given to them and can access this information so it has built lot of confidence among that uh, our uh, funding partners and as well as it established very strong transparency and accountability now i'll be very quickly uh, taking you through what kind of benefit we are having so uh, as i start with you like um, technology really help in the greater outreach coverage of uh, uh, coverage of the this our larger outreach because we are in 24 states we are in 72 districts so a manual system re- Uh, really will be a hindrance to reach everyone to capture everyone but the technology based system is very good in uh, capturing this information so it's capturing all the uh, sorry uh, children basically <clears throat> it's helping us the tracking all the children it's providing us the real time information and uh, another benefit basically we can actually uh, capture the entire journey of a child from the day he the child is registered from the day the child pass out from the system our system okay uh can move out of presenter more easier to read with i'm not get So that person is asking you to make it full screen. The next time. How to time. do it? Shall we one more time? I I am doing Venkatesh. I was not realizing what you are seeing, so I thought like you are seeing at the full screen. No worries, sir. Thanks. Okay. Yes, perfect. Thank you, sir. 
ओके सॉरी आई डेंट रियलाइज कि दिस इज यू आर सीइंग द सेम थिंग व्हिच आई एम सीइंग ओके ओके सो बेसिकली इट्स हेल्पिंग अस टू द अदर थिंग अनदर थिंग इज द रिड्यूस कॉस्ट बेसिकली इट्स ऑबवियस बेसिकली इट्स अ लॉट ऑफ कॉस्ट इज रिड्यूस फर्स्ट थिंग इफ वी ट्राई टू अचीव द सेम लेवल ऑफ डेटा रिगार्डिंग सेम लेवल ऑफ सोर्स लेवल इंफॉर्मेशन it is not possible in this kind of cost which we are doing there may be initial cost in it system training people but in the long term we certainly save and uh, see there are published studies basically which says that uh, uh, using uh, it based system save your cost and uh, cost not is not a direct cost basically a lot of other cost uh, indirect cost are also save your decision making become faster it also save the cost and uh, so costing element if you see it saves a lot of cost basically to organization another thing is the increased accuracy basically in uh, uh, any pen paper based system or any kind of or a kind of many organization uses the kind of uh, hybrid system where from the source level manual data come and maybe some uh, project office level or some regional level the data is compiled and sent to the central level but first thing lot of there are chances of you uh, losing accuracy in that okay uh but now uh, in our kind of system whatever is being entered at the uh, our field worker level the exact data is coming at the central web based system and central database so there is no loss of uh, kind of uh, 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 kind of uh, accuracy in in the process so that has been uh, uh in short through this and basically another thing the the technology also help in securing your data and uh, see another thing see uh, we have to realize see the kind size of the organization of our kind thousands of people are delivering session every day at hundreds of locations so this kind of operations if you start capturing manual certainly there will be chance of uh, 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 like inaccuracy some level of inaccuracy will be there but in our kind of system the person sitting let's say in some uh, rural maharashtra conducting session sending data from there and directly coming to my desk so there is no loss of process, uh, in, in the process so that kind of things are assured in this our uh, system so it's a very high level of accuracy is there next is the multiple utility of data so there are a lot of utility of the data basically in uh, uh, like in uh, mnd parlance if you say or analyst parlance like uh, uh, if you have the source level data you can play with the data but if you don't have that kind of data you cannot play with the data basically so basically uh, you can uh, uh, you may use it in many ways and uh, and especially other things like multiple stakeholders data can be linked with each other actually and you can also tag the data with the gps so on the gps or something you can actually kind of map a visualize the map from where you have the concentration of session deliveries or any kind of program activity and uh, other thing this is a, a, all kind of languages people can use at their level and uh, but in the central system it it comes to us so technology take care of everything basically and it is easier to follow up because suppose a regional director sitting in our regional office he or she find that there is a gap here he is uh, having his dashboard if he say gap somewhere he can take quick decision from there so a lot of uh, things are there another thing is a better insight basically so uh, all kind of system are providing us the better insight of the program as i told you at every level we are seeing every projects um, this magic bus is implementing more than 100 projects so it, uh, and more than 100 projects uh, being implemented at uh, in 72 different districts and hundreds of location close to 3000 schools and that kind of mammoth thing so if you want to take decision at people at different level at the need the different level of information so it is helping us to for each level providing the accurate and 
uh, useful information so that uh, uh, that information is get and they get the better insight which help in taking their decision another thing the another component for example this learning management system is a technology based system our employee is sitting in some uh, remote district of mizoram he is having access or she is having access to learning management system so uh, his or her capacity can be built on certain things he can go back on learning management system refer back how the, what this curriculum is what this program intervention is and the person can develop his or her capacities and especially this uh, um, uh, our power bi is again providing the very good uh, help in these things okay and uh, uh and uh, this livelihood thing so livelihood platform again is helping very much because now the entire journey of the youth is being tracked means like we are having for example we are uh, tracking job placement data we are tracking our alumni so the people who are placed in uh, corporates somewhere our youth they provide us the feedback in this kind of experiences they are having and it actually help to organization in further improvements taking strategic decisions and a technology based solution is providing and last but the not the least is the most important basically uh see it's a better transparency and accountability towards our partners so our partners funding partners i'm talking about they have lot of confidence now on this thing because they have access to the source level data um, uh, if i say let's say some irfan has taken his training from us they can uh, track the entire journey of irfan from where he entered in the class 6 to the like class 12 he passed out what kind of sessions were delivering what he did what he learned what are his outcome indicators how many home visits were made during uh, the program period in his house all kind of information so entire journey so uh, this transfer this it's a very transparent system it, it's not some number hum we are saying ki this percent of uh, adolescent has achieved this percent we can go back and verify each children if we say let's say 1000 children has received this intervention we can produce the name of 1000 ch- children so it's it's a, not only is a transparency it's a, it's a huge accountability we are assuring through this system and see another thing it's a, it's helping in building up the strong compliance mechanism see now you see a lot of csr funds uh, is coming to the development sector and there are csr is having very different rules basically they conduct different data audits they are hiring this big big organization which comes to the field and conduct the data audits okay so in such a kind of uh, climate uh, if you have the kind of source level information it greatly help it greatly build the confidence of your funding uh, community now what are the key learning basically uh uh, uh i see some there are questions so maybe i can take up because i can't uh, run both the things so in the end i'll take all the questions you know uh what are the key learning so key learning basically what are the key learning how should we start basically first thing see mnd alone or technology alone cannot success technology is a vehicle but uh, your your program should have the clear road map where they want to go and how they will go there so that road map should be clear so what i mean to say basically their program processes their indicators of all level should be clear then that's a basic premise of developing uh, of any mnd system or any uh, technology system see mnd alone cannot deliver so that should be the kind of key learning so i think in our organization we equally work on both the sides okay it's just not the technology we are continuously improving we are also continuously improving our curriculum our program processes second part is that we should have a very proper mapping we should have rigorous exercise mapping all kind of uh, business processes our indicators and it should be done in the consultation with all the stakeholders it should not be there like sitting in some room talking to top managers and to develop the system you have to reach up to the field person level and you have to take their feedback what kind of system they would be looking for 
and top of that i think the third point your top management should be buyer of that like uh, whatever push you say but like if they are convinced uh, and uh, uh, and they should have that kind of willingness and like uh, in magic bus case i would like to quote our ceo was very strong like to implement this he he was really looking for use of technology and he came from the he has worked in the corporate sector also and he pushed that we should be using the technology and another learning is that see don't try to achieve everything together he start in the phased manner so like the technology has that kind of uh, uh, utility kind of provision you can say you can develop the things in the phased manner so one system is developed then you can layer the second utility you can layer the third utility nowadays technology help us in that so start in the phased manner first strengthen your core system then go for the extension and another thing i think for your technology team your program team should be able to find the fitting solution if you find some very like uh, highly marketed software but if it is not fitting you it's not fitting you to so find the appropriately fitting solution for this and another thing like uh, uh convince your team that uh, this kind of system strong it systems lead to improved accurate quality uh, regular monitoring and this it's not just about convincing it is also about like uh, you yourself has to realize how this is involving and this improvement process kind of should be uh, weaved with our technology use and our another uh, aspect is the uh, alignment so whom server the whatever the verticals you have in your organization your program your finance your whatever vertical so you have to have the very strong align it should not be a kind of somebody sitting in back office m and d guy and is crunching data but then it might not be uh, helping the system so everyone should be aligned another thing is the roll out roll out is a critical thing sometimes we, we may develop the finest system finest it system in the office if it is not properly uh, roll out it is users are not properly trained if we do not have the ongoing support it's really really a difficult path to roll out the system okay and third thing next thing is the people should see the utility of the system so it's very important whatever data see the data, uh, your uh, it system provide kind of structured analysis or the pre defined analysis but your md team your analyst should be capable enough to download the entire data and should be provide the uh, advanced analysis in addition to that you have to provide the timely feedback somebody your team first thing you have to develop everybody's capacity in kind of interpretation of data and secondly your managers and md team people should be able to provide inter- uh, interpretation and inferences from this data and provide the feedback at all levels somebody like if, if uh, your cluster manager is sitting in some small district and he is put filling all the data but he is not getting any feedback he or she may not be knowing he whether my data was correct whether my program is on the track if he is being provided advanced analysis advanced interpretation then it helps to the system to sustain the system because then they become attached to the system and they become serious if we have to seriously report on the system so this is my concluding slide so i'll just read it actually uh, this report it has been taken from some source so technology has the great enhanced the quality efficiency and precision of uh, mnd processes and activities is in magic bus india this has helped in taking timely evidences uh, based decision making about the ongoing and upcoming program in a planned manner and uh, accordingly allocating the resources for attainment of the well thought of and desired results and goals so thank you very much uh, i believe i was on time in terms of presenting uh, so now we can open the discussion and uh, so some of the questions uh, chavi you can read and i can respond and naresh ji also can help naresh ji in the way to the technology sure there's a question from uh, uh, jaya uh, how long did it take for you to build the system one second is what was the cost of building the thing 
so uh, question number first basically uh, uh, see as i told you like uh, it it we developed in the phase manner so uh, so core utility utility basically in like one year initially we developed and it rolled out and with learning from the experiences we keep adding the things so it is not as i told you like it it, it was not a kind of start to end kind of entire system developed we developed with the process and uh, in terms of cost so rohit uh, could you just uh, chip in here because some of the elements were internal so our uh, it team uh, developed this system and uh, so they are our uh, like regular employees rohit bhai rohit you are there if you can yes, reflect sir. on the cost part so as you rightly said we did not develop it in one go So we started it around 2016. In a year, we went on to try something. It worked. Something worked. Something did not work. By the end of 2019, we had a stable build. Then uh, around 2019, it was uh, estimated to be around close to two crores. After that, this during these two years of COVID, we had to change our plan, bring in a lot of flexibilities. uh we had to uh completely change the approach of the solution and then also think about ways to uh carry out the operations uh in the same application without breaking breaking much of the structure so uh as on date i would say we have crossed somewhere around around 3 crores We hope Jaya, we have uh, answered your question. Second um, one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, Jaya. Like one more thing, Jaya. It will vary organization to organization. See, there may be some basic cost of IT. So, for IT people, know that some utility might cost more. But uh, uh, we are a very, very big organization. As I told you, we it's a three thousand close to three thousand people's organization and the kind of like. So, uh, we were looking for a bigger, bigger system. and uh, another cost element may be the complexity the kind of element and layers you add in the system so i believe it will vary organization to organization if you think the like in learning nareesh ji you want to also add one or two line on this in terms of costing part of it yeah i mean i would add the first point and apparently you know whatever uh, santosh ji has uh, reflected in his, in his presentation apparently each of those uh, you know applications are centerpiece of the strategy and there is no silver bullet you know uh, to kind of have uh, you know implement this kind of solutions it takes a lot of time and patience to deploy you know and uh, over a period of time you know all of all of us have a capacity to become progressively be self aware to life experience and uh, i mean the proof of the pudding is in the eating you know uh, i mean we can keep building this kind of stack but apparently uh you know uh, in a very crude way people say you know garbage in garbage out so unless you have a right set of applications you know built in as a stack for your organization coupled with you know uh, the applications like power bi where you get management insight you know so the whole application stack that santosh reflected apparently you know is reflected by way of power bi tools like power bi so uh because we strongly believe you know any business information is useful only when it is current and delivered on time so that is that is you know more important i think uh, end of the day it might be in crores i mean 2 crore 3 crore 4 crore my i do not have the right number to be very very honest because it's a complete stack of applications you know some got built over a period of time you know some got you know got built you know very quickly and all so that's where it is so uh, i mean it's a it's a complete stack of application of uh, which covers the execution layer the tactical layer and the strategical layer put together okay 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 uh, jay i believe we responded to your question yes uh, yes thank you i actually have a follow up question but i guess this question been asked in somebody else as well uh, how did the adaptation and uh, acceptance at feel level happen I think this is something someone else has also asked, but I thought I'll just since I'm speaking, I'll just ask because it, it takes a lot for a non-tech um, person, like a field-level person, to accept and use it. 
and then see the utility in it and it's difficult when they're using it for the first time and then you have to explain it to them that nahi aapko ye karna hai kyunki humko ye karna hai wo karna hai so how did that happen for magic bus yes i'll take that uh, so uh uh the point is you know there is no silver bullet apparently you know for this kind of implementation so uh, once you go live apparently you know we we say you know very on a very funny note we say you know uh, software and temples are just the same we build them and then we pray that it should work right so that is how it is so uh, i mean uh, we have to i mean uh, once we go live uh, there's a lot of dust in there in terms of you know it takes a while for the dust to settle down and over a period of time now we have been using all of these applications you name oasis you six up plus service ct or magic bus academy all of these applications were built over a period of time and they are all dovetail with each other you know so i hope that answers your question jay yeah and i think one more element i would add narej ji that certainly it was not a cake walk see uh, the what we did actually two fold i uh, have uh, actions we took first thing the very strong user trainings were conducted okay and then uh, uh, other thing uh, our it team developed a very uh, strong kind of help system or support system okay so that help and third thing like once we started reviewing the data once we started providing the feedback so if you provide the feedback you like this much has happened if, if if you are not if you have not entered data in your system and your performance is compromised second month third month you will be aware it's really critical to like uh, enter the data otherwise my performance not be reflected in the system it's a very important like it's a two way uh, it, uh, first thing you build their capacity and we provide help them for example so in some some of the old uh, android things it might not work okay so you have to like encourage them to Uh, uh, have the right kind of uh, Android system. Point number two, build their capacity. So we classroom training, online training, recording, all of this were given. Third thing, like uh, uh, any challenge comes, so they should get the response. So there there were champions among them, uh, Oasis champions as well as the central IT team. They were helping. And next uh, level, the analysis was provided to them. And like. the later what we did that was very interesting so what we did the entire analysis entire reporting will be considered whatever has been reported on the uh, your uh, oasis system so like no parallel thing see they they have they are having their own manual record keeping and then big big uh, tables and chart so they thought like this should be working so we say ki like you can keep you can keep maintaining it for your record but we will provide you feedback based on this oasis system so and uh, in the background another thing is the involvement engagement of the users even in the system development the users were involved all the managers senior managers even field workers our it team discussed our md team discussed with them so it's a, it's a kind of multi level approach to uh, <laughs> rolling out but certainly a kind of this multi Strong approach has worked and working. So I believe we responded your question. Now, uh, right, next, thank you. Jaya and Sharda, they have a common question, and I think we have been able to respond to your question. Uh, Sharda, uh, any any uh, your input on this? thank you so much it was really insightful uh, answer and uh, it was really precise and thank you so much sir for that okay so next question is satvika uh, uh, since you are tracking each individual when it comes to assessing impact how how do you capture qualitative data and assess it for each individual see uh, the technology is not the entire amd system so like uh, largely uh, one part of this uh, entire uh, uh their inputs and uh, outputs are captured through the technology if for the impact evaluations we are conducting very structured impact evaluation using the mix methods so uh, in the mix method the qualitative quantitative both the approach we are using and for the quantitative survey if you are aware about the life skill sector uh it's it's a highly highly standardized tools to be used for measuring change in the life skill level 
so we have done our own exercise so highly reliable and validated tools we are using for measuring the life history and uh, for uh, these measurements we also engage for especially for impact evaluation engage the uh, external agency and they help us to conduct this evaluation but what we do basically uh, so we are like kind of uh, linking uh, our inputs and outputs with the outcomes we achieve another thing uh, uh, in this presentation i have not covered in last year presentation i covered we are using lots of innovative tools also so we uh, which help us to tracking the outcomes means uh, outcome change uh, outcome level change are being tracked through the uh, our innovative tools which these tools are used in uh, during the program implementation so there are multi level multi uh, multi level tools we are using for tracking the impact okay uh next question is when it comes to capturing data there is there are ngos running programs already and how with the advent of tech driven mnd how can they capture data in the middle of the program since poc is developed in the beginning when see it depend basically uh, first and foremost thing you you have to develop your uh, very strong uh, uh, mnd framework you have to have the right kind of thing and if it is a ongoing program uh still you can i believe you can run you can uh, can kind of communicate to your funder and whoever uh, you you have to communicate keep till this date the data is on the pen paper base or manual based system from this point onwards it will be tech based and uh, at the program end line you can merge both the data and can give a comprehensive picture so i don't think that uh, it will be a problem or as far as the toc is concerned i think theory of change will not restrict to you to use the uh, uh, using technology because toc largely talk about your pathways domains and the overall outcome this has to be further broken down into the outcome indicator and your uh, uh, input and output indicator so uh, by defining all this kind of indicator a certain part or a maximum part can be covered through the tag based system uh satpaka thanks for your question your uh, input on this or you want to ask something else related to our response no no thank you so much i think it was well answered yes. thank you thank Bye. you okay. any other questions because we still have 5 10 minute if required we can extend also some more minutes um so so i have another question now since you were mentioning that there is uh, Uh, technology sector class that is being used for your livelihood program so can you uh, just a bit you know uh, emphasize on how are they using it and uh, because livelihood programs include a lot of uh, you can say different level of interventions and maybe at with a different target groups right so first of all i i'd like to understand that how are they using it and maybe i can ask the follow up question So I think the sixer class is being used by our livelihood. So in livelihood, largely uh, what we have the uh, we have we have the our training centers. So okay. uh, whom whatever whoever the children join our program, it is registered. It's enrolled in okay. the system. Basically. Once it mm-hmm. the child is enrolled, then the training part is uh, kind of tracked, and our workers are there. Means our uh, few, uh, livelihood uh, training people are there who provide these things. Okay. and then uh, uh, this data is continuously entered about what kind of input uh, were given to them and then in the end uh, okay. when they placed in the job that data is captured through the system job placement and then some follow up part is also included in this so uh, it's quite mm-hmm. a well defined uh, sixer class uh, thing so if you want to okay. add on the sixer class something just so- Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So just before that, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, okay. So your outcome is just the uh, employment benefit, not uh, self-employment or higher education. 
because uh, when uh, an individual is undergoing a training, I mean, there could possibly be other outcomes to it as well. So it is as of now just limited to wage employment. Ha ha. See, I'll tell okay, you. Okay. Okay. We have very highly identified two groups with which we work. One is the okay. adolescents who are currently studying in the school. So what right. we do basically, what we our in terms of school outcome, our focus is the grade progression and mm-hmm. uh, 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 basically school completion. Completion. There is a focus. Okay. So we are not okay. assuming a child is studying in let's say class six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He or she should be going for a job. What we are focusing, right. they should be like uh, joining some. Uh, they should be continuing their uh, studies. Okay. Then right. another right. target group, uh, and uh, our engagement uh, uh, with the adolescent is for like three to five years. It's a mm-hmm. very long uh, engagement with the adolescent. Okay. Right, right, right. And but uh, our livelihood program has been uh, defined very differently, basically. So okay. we are uh, okay. kind of targeting the youth. Okay. Who uh, like who have some level of education, some level of understanding, and uh, we are providing very comprehensive two three month course to them, and uh, so in terms of how they can face interview, they are uh, mm-hmm. how they can become more employed. So the target yes, is basically yes. uh, unemployed youth who want a job and who have some basic thing. So they are further brushed up and can be placed in. Uh, corporate so they can uh, they okay. get the kind of job in let's say in cafe coffee day mm-hmm. or starbucks or in some uh, school centers or in some stores that kind of job because when they are better dressed up they can present them very well and their probability of getting job is uh, become very high absolutely uh, so you also mentioned that there are like uh, the class participation or maybe uh, the tra- the trainees in your uh, classroom they There are more than like fifty-five percent, or maybe more than fifty percent female that are there. So, don't you face when it comes to livelihood training? Don't you face this uh, problem of low mobility? Because uh, if you see, they would want to. If when it comes to uh, job employment, it would differ. Uh, it would differ from state to state if the opportunities are present locally or not, right? So, do you face that challenge? And if yes, I mean, how do you overcome it? Basically, see. Uh, uh, Engagement is not something uh, that child comes. We teach. It's not a kind of tuition center kind of thing. Okay. Right, 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 right. Uh, it's not. It's a, a deep engagement with the children in terms of their uh, who they are, and there is engagement with their families also, their communities also. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. it's a kind of uh, the core training program is layered with the community engagement. Community so engagement. that facilitate mm-hmm. and uh, so basically. a uh, lot of these programs are in the um, urban slums and urban pockets already opportunities are there it's not that they, right. they don't there are not opportunities and in the urban area especially in the slum area girls are equally interested so i think you have to mm-hmm. further encourage like you have to op- like uh, convince them you can do and you, you should help them to open the doors so they can walk right. and Can get the job. So, like, so we are facilitating these kind of support. So, I see that your presence is in Punjab as well. So, uh, in what all districts you are present currently? In Punjab. Uh, yes. Hmm. मुझे नाम ध्यान नहीं है भाई. छवि आपको नाम ध्यान है पंजाब के डिस्ट्रिक्ट. Ah. Uh, see, uh, we are, it's a seventy-two district and. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I totally understand. Not a problem. That's okay. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, this was a really insightful conversation. Thank you so much. Okay. But on our website, uh, you can see like uh, all kind of details. Basically, I I I will strongly suggest all of you to check our website, and we keep adding um, keep adding the elements in our website. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I think we will try to share the presentation and recording. Uh, Reem Ahmed has requested. Uh, certainly, Reem, we will share. We'll try to share uh, this our presentation. 
so any other questions satrika uh, in punjab we have presence in lucknow okay okay thank you thank you so much Okay, guys. If no other questions, uh, or maybe we can ask for the feedback or uh, adding on to our presentation. Yeah, yeah. A few people have any feedback on the presentation, any reflection on the presentation. You may also share it. Just not necessary to ask the questions, but like maybe how do you feel? Maybe like you can share at the larger level also if it you feel it helps to other people also. So anybody can give us the feedback. I see lot of not many people. Okay, no issues. Uh, I think uh, so. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I think we can conclude the session. We are right on time. Uh, so like it's twelve three s in my. laptop it is showing and uh, thank you very much everyone thank you very much thank really you everyone for joining